the United States used laser weapons in combat for the first time. The U.S. Navy has reported about successful destruction of Houthi drone in the Red Sea. The drones targeted an American warship in the Red Sea. However, what interests us is not who sent the drone, but how it was shot down. Laser weapons really reach the point where they can be successfully used in warfare? You may not realize the full significance of such protection, because drones do not seem to be a powerful weapon. You can knock them over with a stone. However, it's bad form to underestimate the enemy. Just take a look at the most annoying drone of our time, the Shahed. These unmanned aerial vehicles pose a serious threat to civilians in Ukraine because despite their cheatiness, they're able to bypass modern air defense systems. The mission of a kamikaze drone is to fly to a target and explode. They're used exclusively for this purpose, which makes the Shahed 136 simple and cheap. Um, drones can be very precise, very accurate. They can hit the target if you have the right information about that target. The drone is made of cheap components. There's a four-cylinder carburetor engine inside, which makes the Shahed 136 very noisy and not fast enough in flight, only 110 miles per hour. And it's its speed that's a problem, because modern air defense systems pick up targets that move quickly. And in this case, we have a maximum of 110 miles per hour. Moreover, the cost of a kamikaze drone is low compared to other types of weapons, for example, the average cruise missile of the latest generation is priced at $5 million per unit, while the price of a kamikaze drone barely reaches $50,000. So what should the United States use to shoot down such weapons? Should it be guns? Of course, no. One of the options that the U.S. often installs on its ships is the Phalanx SeaWiz system, and for the most part, it's proven itself to be excellent. This machine is installed on board of the Arleigh Burke destroyers, including the USS Ross, about which we'll talk more today. The Falcon Sea Wiz is an incredibly high-speed machine gun capable of firing over 4,200 rounds per minute. It literally turns fighters into a sim, and it does it very accurately. Precision is the, is the highest requirement that we have to meet when we make, make something like that. It would seem that this is the solution to the problem of annoying drones. But there's one caveat. Even the Shahed 136 can fly at an altitude of three miles, while the Phalanx has a range of only two miles. This means that in certain cases, anti-aircraft guns are not suitable against such targets. But what to do then? What great invention should help the United States get rid of enemy weapons? Lasers. It's laser weapons that can solve all problems. Back on May 16th last year, the U.S. Pacific Fleet Command announced the successful completion of the Laser Weapon System Demonstrator Laser System Test, which was deployed aboard the USS Portland Amphibious Assault Ship. It successfully destroyed the flying target. These are not the first tests of laser weapons in the U.S. Navy, but the first to be conducted against a drone at sea. This is a landmark event, but it was not without its mistakes because lasers require a lot of energy, which is usually produced by huge ground-based systems. It's impossible to install such a system at sea, and it would seem that the U.S. plan has failed. However, the solution comes naturally when you look at the USS Gerald R. Ford. Its power and grandeur are emphasized by the presence of two nuclear reactors capable of not only moving a multi-ton ship, but also powering all its needs, including the LWSD laser system currently installed on deck. And the foundation that we're building here today at Gerald R. Ford will last for the next 50 plus years. It will last throughout our lives. If we get this right, Gerald R. Ford will go on to be not just the most technologically advanced warship in the Navy, but the greatest warship in the Navy. So will the largest ship be able to cope with annoying enemy drones? Let's look at all the benefits of a drone. These include a flight altitude that avoids anti-aircraft guns, and visibility to radar and low cost. We'll also mention its disadvantages, namely noisy flight, inability to automatically influence the flight course and the quality of the materials it's made of. With all these aspects in mind, wouldn't the best option be to use laser weapons on the USS Gerald R. Ford? The sensors and radars of the aircraft carrier are too strong to take into account, but the LWSD system itself has radars tuned to a high range of targets. Its radar can detect the movement of both supersonic missiles and slow drones. Even if the radar fails, the noise made by the engine of the drone will give away its position, and as we know, it flies a linear trajectory, which makes it clear where it'll go next. 
Thus, the first problem is solved. The next one is altitude. The maximum flight altitude of the Shahed is three miles. There are also combat drones that can take off at four miles, but they all lose to a laser system with a range of six miles. Therefore, the drone has no chance to withstand the deadly laser beam. Even if a hundred drones fly to one ship, they'll all burn in seconds because the materials they're made of are instantly combustible. The only question left is the price. One shot from such a nano cannon costs only $2, while it can destroy a $50,000 drone. And the laser doesn't need ammunition. I say there are two advantages. One, the cost per kill, the recovering is, is low. And the second is that there is no ammunition. Please don't let the capabilities of the new system cloud your judgment, because any technology, even the most advanced, has its drawbacks. First, to defend against close-range threats such as mortar shells, laser weapons need to hit the target before it can do any damage. Everything is clear with the Shahed-136. It's made of two cheap materials. But what to do if the enemy starts covering the shells with a reflective material? In this case, the laser will not have time to heat the target enough to detonate in the air. The same goes for distance. Burning solid materials over long distances requires considerable power, which an aircraft carrier has, but which smaller ships do not. At the same time, lasers generate a huge amount of heat that must be effectively removed. And the last disadvantage is the weather conditions. This is currently the main problem with laser weapons. It's fog, rain, smoke, etc. prevent the laser from fully affecting the hull of the target, and thus the effectiveness of the laser decreases. You One is a short range, the other is uh, the sensitivity to weather, and the third is the low kill rate. But American engineers are smart people and they found a way to take only the best from lasers, avoiding all the disadvantages. The military engineers proposed to combine the efforts of laser weapons and standard air defense systems as it was done on the USS Ross. It was created for the main purpose of prompt and effective counteraction to any threats. It's equipped with at least two air defense launchers capable of shooting down enemy fighters and missiles. At the same time, a smaller version of the LWSD laser system with a maximum power of 100 kilowatts was prepared for it. This cannon is weaker than a laser from the Ford, but it does an excellent job of destroying inexpensive drones, and if the targets are more agile or out of range of the laser, then the USS Ross will fire missiles. USS Ross successfully intercepted a ballistic missile. Also, the United States can replace one missile with an anti-aircraft missile system, let's say the Phalanx. In this case, the USS Ross will have anti-aircraft missiles and laser air defense systems on board at the same time, meeting absolutely all the needs of the U.S. Army. The United States is choosing the right direction in the development of its weapons. The country not only created amazing laser systems capable of fighting drones, but also invented drones capable of fighting enemy lasers. The idea of laser weapons came to the military from the entertainment industry. With the advent of the first developments in the 60s, comic book and movie creators showed colorful blaster shots, lightsabers, and other weapons that seemed universal and stirred the imagination of military engineers. The first practical attempts to use lasers as an independent type of weapon took place in the early 2000s and looked like a laser installation attached to the bow of a Boeing 747. This set the development vector for what we see now. Israel's making great progress and is even getting paid for it. The United States has announced that it'll provide Israel with $1.2 billion for laser weapons under the Iron Beam program. If you push the button, your beam touches the rocket at the speed of light. Why is this so? It's simple. Such investments will save money for the United States itself. High-energy laser weapons offer a significant economic advantage. Each shot costs up to $1,000, in contrast to the estimated cost of the Tamir interceptor missile used in the Iron Dome missile defense system, which costs between forty dollars and $50,000. I would say around 90% of the interceptions we wanted to make, we make, but still there's too many rockets raining down here. Initially, the laser system was planned to be adopted by the IDF in 2025. However, the current situation calls for the process to be accelerated. In 2022, Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett announced the country's plan to create a laser wall to move from spending money on a large number of interceptors to using less expensive lasers. I'd say there are two advantages. One, the cost per kill, the recovery is low. And the second is that there is no ammunition. 
And in April 2022, the Magan Ore System successfully intercepted mines, missiles, and anti-tank missiles during tests in the Negev Desert. In February 2023, the Iron Beam Project, which includes Magan Ore, was presented at the IDEX Defense Exhibition in the United Arab Emirates. However, Israeli experts emphasize the technological difficulties that lasers face when dealing with large missile volleys, as lasers need time to heat up the target and destroy it. For example, to destroy a missile, a laser may need to hit the target continuously for two to three seconds. In addition, the iron beam is not immune to the general problems inherent in laser weapons. With this objective. One is a short range, the other is uh, the sensitivity to weather, and the third is the low kill rate. The war between Israel and Hamas has shown that the militants have potentially doubled the rate of missile fire compared to the war they fought in May 2021, and the speed and range are critical. The range is limited. It's more limited than uh, the range of the uh, intercept of weapons. And not only Israel faced this problem, continuous attacks on U.S. bases in Iraq led to the deployment of the first operational laser weapon system, three striker armored fighting vehicles armed with 50 kilowatt lasers known as DM Showrads are already countering drones that have caused losses to the U.S. military. The DM Showrads is intended to provide air defense for ground forces, protecting them from drones. The entire 50 kilowatt laser system weighs about seven tons, and when mounted on a striker, it receives armored protection at a maximum speed of 62 miles per hour. The system is controlled by a secure laptop, and the operator uses an Xbox-style controller to control the fire. The use of lasers has several advantages over existing drone countermeasures. Unlike gun or missile systems, a laser theoretically has an unlimited number of shots, limited only by the access of the system to electricity. The lasers travel at the speed of light and do not require guidance to intercept a target. The system will also not suffer from electronic warfare interference. The DM Showrad systems are not only capable of engaging drones, but also capable of destroying enemy shells in flight. This is the first ever system capable of intercepting enemy artillery shells in the air before they hit the ground. Compared to the Israeli laser, this one looks a bit more advanced and sophisticated. However, not everything is so perfect as well. Substances in the atmosphere, especially water vapor as well as sand, dust, salt particles, smoke, and other air pollutants absorb and scatter light, and atmospheric turbulence can defocus the laser beam. While work is ongoing to improve land-based technologies, surface lasers are already actively performing combat missions. Shipboard lasers such as the 60-kilowatt Helios with an integrated optical occluder and surveillance system can significantly reduce the impact of atmospheric water vapor on laser performance by operating only at hot spots in the electromagnetic spectrum. But other phenomena such as dust storms do not yet have such a convenient solution. Although where dust storms come from in the sea is a matter of debate. Currently, the U.S. Navy has one San Antonio-class amphibious transport ship equipped with a 150-kilowatt MK-2 Mod Zero laser weapon demonstrator. Eight Arleigh Burke-class destroyers are also equipped with the Odin Optical Dazzle system, and one Arleigh Burke-class destroyer is equipped with the well-known 60-kilowatt high-energy laser with the Helios Integrated Optical Dazzle and Surveillance System. Some of these systems are already in active use and are helping to repel attacks in the Middle East which significantly reduces the cost of air defense. However, the United States always wants more and is actively working on a powerful 300-kilowatt Hellcap laser. It differs from previous systems in that it will engage not only UAVs but also anti-ship cruise missiles. The U.S. Navy initiated Hellcap in 2019 after completing the first phase of the ruggedized high-energy laser program, the main purpose of Hellcap is to serve as a building block for future programs by solving technical problems. The effort to build and develop technology through separate programs designed to meet specific technology challenges will culminate when these program elements are combined into the laser weapons testbed that's central to the Hellcap. The basis of the test prototype of the laser weapon will be a 300-plus kilowatt laser. That is a fundamental change for laser weapon systems, which here to date have been prototypes. After the completion of testing of the main components and subsystems, the Navy will begin testing the system against targets of increasing complexity. At the initial stage, the system will be tested on static ground targets, then on dynamic targets, and then move on to intercepting low-cost unmanned aerial vehicles and cruise missiles. 
Israel has not reached such a level yet, but who knows what $1.2 billion can do. However, in the laser world, the United States and Israel have another competitor, or should I say ally, who's also ready to revolutionize the world of weapons. The UK has demonstrated a new laser weapon that the military says can provide effective missile or air defense at a cost of about $13 per shot. So Dragonfire's uh, laser directed energy weapon demonstrator. A recently released video from a test of what the UK Ministry of Defense calls Dragonfire, a directed energy laser weapon system, captured the successful use of a laser against an airborne target. It's potentially a game changer for air defense, says the video which shows a bright laser beam piercing the night sky over a training range in the remote Hebrides archipelago, creating a ball of light when it hits its target. The British Ministry of Defense claims that Dragonfire can accurately hit a coin-sized target at long distances, but does not provide specifics. The exact range of the weapon is classified. We can just fire using, using a laser weapon and have on our platforms is potentially going to be much cheaper. The laser beam can cut through metal, leading to structural failure or more destructive consequences. It's also claimed to destroy targets at a fraction of the cost of modern air defense missiles. The Ministry of Defense has estimated the cost of a 10-second laser shot at about $13. For comparison, a standard missile used by the U.S. Navy for air defense costs more than $2 million. And perhaps this weapon has already been used in combat because Dragonfire's participation in repelling Iranian attacks on Israel and protecting the Red Sea is being actively discussed by experts. And something tells me that this is true. And is at the leading edge, not just of technology, but in demonstrating the end-to-end -end capability and inform the UK's future procurement. Given the current pace of development of laser technology, in a few years, we'll see the massive use of these systems and the gradual retreat of air defense systems into the background. And we hope that by the time these weapons will not fall into the hands of crazed dictators. Thank you for watching, and see you soon.